Good afternoon, everybody. Um, once again, welcome to the second day of the Community Engagement Colloquium. I'm Gail Kayla, and I'm honored to be chairing the panel discussion focusing on local impact with international relevance. I believe that the issue of societal impact is of critical importance too. We know that um, engagement of communities is part of the UWC DNA makeup embedded in its commitment to foster reciprocal and inclusive partnerships. This was patently evident from the inputs of the deans yesterday, and I'm sure our panel will expand on this um, later. We also know that scholarly engagement is of critical importance for the social impact of universities. Um, I'm now going to turn over to our first panelist, Mr. Larry Popkus. Um, Larry, over to you. Ms. Kayla, good afternoon and good afternoon to everyone. I'm just trying to see if I can share the screen. Uh, one second, please. Everybody able to see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. And uh, I'll just go into it, uh, this mode if I can. Right. Um, thank you for the invitation and good afternoon, everyone, again. And it's good to, Ms. Kayla, to see you again after so many years, although virtually. <laughs> uh, the, the um, few points that I want to raise around anchoring institutions today, I um, want to make four points, but I've got uh, kind of eight, nine slides for it, but I'll, I'll rush through it. But the, the first point is just to um, locate this within a sense of purpose. The second is to talk about anchoring institutions and then to contextualize this within the UWC context. And fourthly, uh, just to draw us on some lessons that we've learned uh, and then the conclusion. So the IOP or the Institutional Operating Plan was done under the theme Connecting Possibilities. And I want to talk about the connecting possibilities in or the connecting possibilities of anchoring places. Now, just as an introduction, three slides. The first is, I don't have to preach to the, uh, to the converted today that you know, engagement and anchoring is part of the ethos and part of the DNA of the institution, and that these efforts actually abound within the organization, leading to rising expectations. More recently, the university has adopted or amended its mission statement and inserted in its mission statement the anchor mission as a subset of its engagement ethos. So here comes uh, the first challenge that I want to put to you. How as an institution do we realistically lend thoughtful support to deepen our understanding and accelerate action to redress some of the disparities in society, while at the same time reaping the transformative benefit of the multiple efforts that's happening on a university's wide scale. And there is a, a cross-cutting area established and Professor Levac will lead uh, you know, that area about helping us to understand how as an institution we engage to, uh, with this. The second point in this introduction, I don't have to remind you of the story of UWC. Some people would refer to this as a story of struggle. I prefer to talk about the story of optimism and agency and unlocking untapped potential. So the university was founded in the 60s for and uh, with very little hope of what it should contribute to society apart from upholding apartheid. It uh, defied the apartheid legislation, the ideological grounds on which it was founded and effectively became an agent of transformation and the intellectual home of the democratic left under Professor Gerwel, uh, which led to a number of opportunities for the institution to attract talent from all over, students, staff, et cetera, from all over. Unfortunately, the dawn of democracy and the euphoria of the time was the Achilles heel of the university when it lost significant intellectual and other capabilities. One third of the university staff 
became the ministers in President Mandela's cabinet. We lost the rector, we lost senior staff to government agencies, etc. And so it took quite some time to rebuild the institution um, and its intellectual recovery. So here comes the question, drawing on that proud history, how does one now reimagine the university's future role, but different in evolution? And the key point here is that this is not a static process, it's a dynamic process of building a better society whilst at the same time consistently making or becoming UWC uh, with those two book titles. So I want to just uh, as, a, as a concluding to the introduction, just use the story of the Chilateca Bridge, which I used earlier in the, in the previous presentation of you know, the bridges in Honduras and South America having to withstand uh, the strong uh, hurricanes. And so they built this bridge uh, designed to withstand the strongest hurricane. And in 1998, uh, Hurricane Mitch permanently, as you can notice on, on uh, here where the bridge is, that it permanently changed the course of the river, rendering the bridge effectively useless. And so my key point here is about purpose. It is about um, a bridge that does not serve its purpose as although it may be firmly anchored. And so our understanding of, of uh, anchoring an institution has to be firmly understood within the sense of purpose, sense of mission. And maybe that question at the bottom may be uh, important for you. Two brief slides about uh, anchor institution literature. It's place-based, usually called sticky institutions because it can't move. It's deeply rooted in its local geographies and it can play an integral role in the social and economic revitalization of their surroundings. And it needs to simultaneously achieve shared value. So here comes the issue of reciprocity, which is something uh, still need to be debated and understood within the institution. But I think the key point here is that an anchor mission and anchoring is a tool for the university or a more methodical approach. It is a means to an end and not an end in itself. And maybe just to summarize on the literature, it therefore deals with the university's spatial immobility. And I want to just caution you about place-based connections that this is not about know your place and stay in your place and stay in your location. Because in the South African context of apartheid, one needs to think of spatial transformation too. The university has formal status, corporate status, if you wish, a formal legislative mandate. And within that mandate, it has the ability to influence and to impact. It's called anchor institution because of its uh, land holdings, because of the size, sheer size of staff and students, its uh, purchasing power. And maybe the last two points for me would be more critical, that that mission alignment, I think this in the mission, is to commit to greater purposes, to a social justice, human rights, democracy, and good citizenship agenda. This is an, uh, an area where both universities and communities have a vested interest in their surroundings, but unfortunately, this potential is largely untapped. So against that background, let's just look at the context of UWC. So here I want to raise three challenges. The one is a challenge of scale, a challenge of collaboration and collaborative infrastructure and the challenge of making wise choices. Now on the left-hand side, on my left-hand side, you have South Africa with uh, the Western Cape being uh, the, the province Western Cape um, here. And then in that corner, in a sense, Southwestern corner, you have the Cape metropolitan area. And within the Cape metropolitan area where, the, where this uh, cursor is now, that's where you have UWC. So in a sense, it's equidistant from Cape Town to the University of Stellenbosch here, to Mitchell's Plain and maybe to the north. So there is an issue of, of the university's location. Maybe I should say within the hinterland of where poverty starts and ends in the Western Cape. Also note its proximity to the uh, peri-urban areas, the farm areas, like Stellenbosch farms, in close proximity. And the university has some intention to deal with 
uh, locations of peri-urban and rural communities. So if you take this uh, slide and you look at the right-hand side, the same uh, where Cape Town is, the university is exploring in its strategies, anchoring the institution along the main corridors, which is Fortreka Road and Symphony Road, Durban Road. You know, Durban Road will become Symphony Road at some point. And it is locating a campus in Woodstock, close to the campus Cape Town CBD. It has, uh, this is where the university is located. It has set up, this is a bit disproportionate, but it has set up the Belleville campus with some facilities in Belleville. It has a campus in Mitchell's Plain and then it's got its Tigerberg and other campuses. So the issue here is one of scale. Whether one deals with the project level where the individual might work or program level or at the node level, like a building <clears throat> or a precinct or corridor level, et cetera. And this is one of the challenges. And we are working within the Tiger Book partnership to deal with issues of a collaborative infrastructure. How do we talk then to multiple role players and where's the forum to deal with that? Now, just two examples of these anchoring strategies. The one is uh, the, uh, an approach of uh, catalytic uh, urban revitalization. I don't have to speak to this issue. You know that the university has set up a campus in Belleville. Uh, in order to influence uh, the universe, to influence other role players in helping to to um, establish a more conducive environment uh, for students, etc. And I think the last point on this slide is that how do we, as a community, help to understand the potential stakeholder influences and the community needs in that area? The second last. Mr. Pappas, sorry, yeah. if I can just come in here. You're on time. I just wanted to check how much more time you were going to be requiring. I've got, I've got two more slides after this. I'm almost done. Okay, thank okay. you. The, the, the second uh, example that I want to give is that the university is in the process of expanding its footprint. This is, uh, that's where the campus is, with the railway line behind the campus. And this is the Belhar development. And the university has acquired three pockets of land plus another set of land and it's negotiating with the city there. But the point is that very soon when we return, we will not just have 2,700 extra beds, but a neighboring community of 16,000 residents. And this becomes a challenge for the university in terms of a high density area. Uh, and how do we create the collaborative infrastructure with different spheres of government who are co-owners, city, province, et cetera, in how one builds a neighborhood. So having said that, second last slide, this is what lessons have we learned that none of these examples are the same. They're contextually different. There's no one size fits all. We learned that it's very messy to work with different spheres of government. It takes long. We do have an, uh, the ability to influence and create placemaking, but it will require uh, the collaborative effort to take the long haul on this. In the end, this is about people all with an interest participating and working to make this work. Just coming back in conclusion to uh, this uh, slide of the bridge, I think we are challenged to take to seize the opportunity to engage and use our anchor missions to forge a more meaningful and impactful university community relationship in order to build an inspiring sense of a future for all of us. Thank you, Chair. Okay.